We've almost made it. And that right there is the Pacific Ocean! It's been almost three years since we bought our boat during the height of the pandemic. And if you haven't been following along, you can catch up on our adventure as we put all our time and energy into building up Indioco into a true blue water cruising catamaran. We had to learn a bunch of boat repair skills along the way to rescue our old Leopard 47 from a hard life in charter. And we've sailed to 16 different countries in the Caribbean along the way. Now, here in Panama, we're about to take on our biggest challenge yet as we transit our sailboat through the Panama Canal. Well, it is 4 a.m. and our day starts here. Today is transit day. We have got a 6.30 lock time this morning, which means that our advisor's coming at five. So Ian has just taken the dinghy into the marina to collect our line handlers. I don't think I'm going to have three and a half four hours sleep, but uh, we've got to go pick up our line handlers who are all waiting for us in the marina. So we need to uh, scoop our way into the in the dark here. And then we need to be ready to get moving and we're going through the Underway. I'm not necessarily allowed to talk to the camera at any point today, so uh, you might not see me looking at you very much. <laughs> yeah, this is us filming while the advisor is up at the front so he doesn't see that Ian's actually on camera. It's mainly going to be me because we've got four line handlers to do all of the hard work. Ian is being a skipper today and I just get to chat with you guys. So I'm going to get in everybody's way. I'm going to try and film as much as possible and just live the experience with you. It is so surreal we've already had our sit down talk from the advisor telling us that like line handlers have lost fingers in the past so they have to pay attention and uh, yeah it's a little bit terrifying but uh, we are lifted anchor we're heading over towards the gates and there's another two boats that we're going to raft up alongside and then we're going to go into the lock with them as one big kind of floating pontoon thing so uh <laughs> it's getting real our speed is 6.5 Seven and a half. We've just been told off for not going fast enough. So uh, six and a half knots is not fast enough in the canal. We've had to ramp it up to seven and a half. I can smell the engines kind of getting a bit hot now. <laughs> I really hope we don't break down. We're about to go under the bridge. This is getting so real. Well done. <laughs> it was a close call. We were basically told if we didn't catch up with these boats, we'd miss our window. So um, I, I think we made it in time. I hope. I oh, meant we didn't hit the bridge. Also, we didn't hit the bridge. <laughs> also, I think we're going to the right locks because there's two sets, so. The sky is definitely getting lighter behind us now and we've come under the bridge so we can see the locks for the first time. And you can see lights going up the hill next to the locks. And just for the first time, I've really kind of comprehended we're about to take our boat uphill. It's so weird. Morning. So we're just rafting up to this mono hull here and trying to get all of the lines nice and tight, fenders in the right places so that we are, yeah, two boats together. And then I think another one is going to come, who knows from where or on which side, but at least I don't need to do anything. Everyone else is dealing with the lines and getting everything tied up. He is controlling the boat so that we don't kind of drift into the bank. And uh, I think we're just almost about there with that first one. 
and now we have another monohull coming up on this side, which I guess means that we're going to be in the center of what they call a nest, in the middle of the raft. We thought we might be on the side because one of them was quite big, but uh, yeah, looks like we're in the middle, which is good and bad. It means that our line handlers don't need to do as much work, so they get to have a bit more of a day off, and it means that we can uh, hopefully have less damage to our solar panels. We put like old cushions and mattresses on top of our solar panels last night to protect them so that when they throw the lines in from shore, if they land on the panels, then it doesn't crack them and break them. That's my one of my biggest fears. So at least we'll be in the middle and should be further away from any lines getting thrown. <laughs> we'll see. It up, so we are heading to the locks. Luckily, the sun's coming up. Uh, now I'm just the motor for two other boats. We just collected two very expensive fenders. <laughs> <laughs> we also have, I think, at least three languages, maybe four going between all the boats, so it's quite fun to keep track. It's mental. <laughs> We've got our first two lines on board. They threw the monkey fist, big kind of knot in the end to give it weight so they can throw it, and it did not land on our solar panel. So that is a good start. We just get everything tied up and trying to straighten up in these locks. Well then. This is nuts. Absolutely crazy. I love it though, but it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> We're so much closer to the wall than I thought we would be. I thought the lock was really big and wide and that we would like be a little dot in the middle far away from anything, but uh, no, it's, it's really close. So the guys up on the wall have thrown down two skinny lines that we can catch. We've tied them onto our big heavy blue uh, lines that we've rented, and then they're gonna hoist them back up to the wall and tie us on when we get into the lock. So these two guys just walking along at the same pace that these boats are going at, just trying to keep up and uh, we're not really attached right now, but when we get in, they'll kind of tie us all off before the water starts changing level. I think, we'll find out. I won't lie, this is very surreal. <laughs> okay, I really can't complain about how tight it is because I've just seen the boat in front of us, this massive container ship, and it's got about three centimeters either side of it to just fit down the space. That's insane. And we're gonna go through in the same lock as this guy. So that's gonna be our view for the morning now. This is wild. right inside the lock and Ian was like, uh, look behind you, the doors are closing. Goodbye Caribbean. I guess goodbye Caribbean, goodbye Atlantic, goodbye everything that we know and it's all about to change. The doors have just closed and it's actually got more echoey in here. As you hear people talking to each other with just a slightly raised voice, it's just like bouncing off all of these walls. It's such an odd feeling. We're like confined in this tiny little cage. How did we end up here? Oh my goodness, it's starting. Look at that. So the job of our line handlers today is basically as the water level rises inside the lock, the lines are tied on at the top and we've got the loose end down here. So as we rise, they have to pull in the slack line to make sure that it's still actually giving us some kind of control. And I'm guessing when we go down the other side, the more important job will be to let the line out as the water level goes down. Otherwise we'll end up kind of hanging in midair as the sea disappears beneath us. So that needs a lot of muscles. It needs a lot of concentration. Victor, our advisor today, has told us that nobody is allowed to be on a mobile phone. Nobody's allowed to do anything else that takes their attention away from that job, which is why I'm not doing it. <laughs> this is crazy surreal. I can almost see above the walls now. That just went up so fast. And just like that, we've passed the first lock. Yeah, we did it. Almost. Our advisor Victor has just said, okay, make sure all of the lines are as tight as possible. Now that we're at the top of this lock, they're going to open the gates at the beginning at the front and uh, a huge wash is going to come through as all of the waters kind of merge and meet together. So we shall, we shall see what happens to the boats, but I guess we might be kind of like rocking and rolling around a little bit. And we can already see the next tanker coming into the lock behind us. It is just all go, all speed, get everybody through as quickly as possible. A little 
the Ford. <laughs> Lot number two. So they've just got to the top of the second lock. We've got so many more of these to go, but they've just opened up the doors and I think this guy's just turned on his engines and the force of the water coming back. Everyone had to like strain on the lines and slam the engines into forward to try and hold us in the right place. And at this point we can see the boat behind us going into that first level of this lock. So as we're going forward through these locks, I just looked over and saw this massive tanker going the other way, literally blocked out the sun. We have just got so many like AIS notifications going off being like, whoa, whole ton of big boats really close to you. We're just coming into the third level now and I'm told there is a webcam up on a tower somewhere here. So uh, I'm waving to anybody who's watching us live. Hi guys. the last time was tight with this guy in front of us only just fitting in and now we've come to this level and there's another one going the other way it's right up there boats shouldn't do that this is absolutely insane so this is the third gate or it's the third level in the lots so that yeah it's tight huh 12, 12, 12 inches, inches inside in those times the company that make the ship they make the ship, the size of the ship, against okay. the size of the... To fit the canal. Yes, yeah, to fit the canal. So this one is a Panamax. Okay. He only, he only have a clearance of 12 inch in each side. That's crazy. It looks like less from so here. So the job of the mules is to keep it in the middle, avoid okay. to hit the walls. Yeah. But when he have to move, he have to use his own power. Also, we generate the electricity. From the lake. So the excess of, uh, of power, we sell it to the government. Oh, amazing. That's great. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> we need to catch more money. <laughs> <laughs> we need to pay the new locks. Yeah. It's, it's $5.6 billion. Wow. Plus the, the make to the new locks. So. Ooh. The, new, the Panamax container vessel carrier 4,000 containers. The container in the new locks, yeah. 14,400. What? So that means three times one. Yeah. You got it, right? You follow yeah. me? Yeah. Well. So Victor's just been telling us that this boat in front of us has got, I think he said 10,000 cars on it, all brand new. They drive in on this huge gray ramp, fill up a floor, and then the whole floor of the ship lifts up, and then they drive in another however many thousand. I cannot believe it. That's just insane. That means we're officially out of the Caribbean. It's quite strange, isn't it? It's very strange. Goodbye. I wonder if Indioco floats in fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a surprise. <laughs> And we made it to Lake Gatton. So right over there is where we walked up to from the dinghy the other day and saw those boats coming out onto the lake. And now we are here, Indy made it. So we are 27 meters higher than we were like an hour ago. That's 85 feet above sea level. It's just not right. And now as soon as we're out of the, uh, the locks, we're just gonna de-raft from these other two boats. Everyone's just gonna go hell for leather across the lake and we will raft up again at the other side, I think. Time for breakfast. Okay, I'm officially off the clock for the next, I don't know, hour or so. That was insane. And now we just need to make it across Lake Gatti. So when we came into the lake, the wind was reasonably strong and perfectly on the beam. So I was kind of itching to get a sail out, to be honest. I thought it might help us out and maybe take a bit of pressure off the engines, but uh, now the wind has completely died. So 
Suddenly it's kind of stuffy and warm. The sails, sorry, the sails, the flag is not even moving on the mast. However, <laughs> we do have to deal with things like that. You remember that uh, evergreen vessel that blocked the Suez Canal and caused carnage all over the world? A giant container ship ran around the Suez Canal. That's about the same size, give or take. And uh, yeah, we're about to overtake it because apparently it's not fast enough. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, not gonna lie, feeling a little bit inferior right now. I thought 47 feet was a reasonable size for a boat, but apparently when you realize that each one of those containers is 40 feet long, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> this is absurd. It's like a tire block. It's like threading the needle, isn't it? It's just, <laughs> we are going faster than it, but we seem to have been like overtaking him for about 20 minutes. The boat just never ends. That's Absolutely because it's, huge. yeah, it's the size of five Wembley stadiums. So we're almost all the way through the lake now. We're approaching the, uh, the locks on the other side, but we've gone a little bit too fast for the other boats that we were with. So apparently we're going to tie up to one of the moorings here and just hang around and wait for everyone else to catch up. And then we can go through this last little bit together. We only had to wait about 20 minutes, so we just ate some chocolate brownies and now we're in the move again. Um, I think we're gonna be in a lock with a passenger ship, a big cruise ship, and I can see one coming around the corner behind us. So maybe that is the one that we've been waiting for. And now we've got the go ahead and we're allowed to carry on. So this is really interesting. This is um, the cut, which basically they slice their way through a mountain to make the canal. And so this is all a mountain range of sorts, or a bunch of hills. And uh, it, when they were doing it, it had like yellow fever issues, and then they had lots of landslides because they didn't really know what they were doing, and it rained a lot. And uh, so it, this is known as like the the area of the canal that cost the most lives. Yeah. Which we recently found out all those bodies got donated to universities for studying. So. It's not a great way to gather study material, but I suppose it's better than nothing. But either I think way, they actually stuff. sold them, so they made some money out of the process too. Oh, <laughs> makes that, it a little bit different, doesn't it? I don't like that anymore. Okay, I take back what I said. They're horrible people. <laughs> but what you don't work out is the steps in this area here are about three times the size of your standard truck, like lorry truck. So uh, they look really small from here, but when you see it against like a staircase for maintenance or something, you realize they're literally huge yeah. chops into yeah. the mountain. And here's like an entire cliff face, and it's just sheer. So now we're rafting up with our two monohulls again and we're about to go through the final set of locks. It's almost like we can smell the Pacific. We're so nearly there. So we've got one monohull rafted on. We're sort of doing a big loop to pick up the other one and we can see the passenger, the cruise ship coming under the bridge now. So everything is coming together just in time. We've just done a big loop in the middle of the canal and now this other mono is doing a big loop around us and hopefully they're gonna end up on our starboard side. waiting around for the cruise ship to arrive. They came into the dock first, and then we've just sort of snuck and overtaken them. So now we're in the front. <laughs> and it's only just occurred to me that because we're going down in the locks, then when we come in, we're at ground level, obviously, and then we're gonna go down. So when they were throwing the lines to us to catch, it, it was really easy because they were just right there. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. <laughs>
very front of the lot, we can see over the wall, over the gate, and down to the level below. I can't believe these gates are holding all of this water back. That's insane! Close, close the line. And we're going down, we're doing it. The water's disappearing and it's going somewhere. I feel like you're slacking off here. This one's gonna be, I like going down. <laughs> I, it's going down is way easier. It's it's much nicer well, going down. Well, you don't have to do anything. The, the responsibility is all on our line handlers. Yeah, they're doing the work. I get to enjoy it. So this is so cool. There's another webcam at this lock somewhere up on this hill, and uh, our families are all watching the webcams back at home and like commentating on the other boats. So uh, we came in and overtook the passenger ship, and they're like, "Oh, nice move." <laughs> That's a weird feeling. That's so odd. It really doesn't take long and we're down one level. So the doors are open. They've just dropped the lines down off the side and out we go through the gates. For all of the kind of build up and momentum that we've had, it's going so quickly. We've only got two more locks to go and we are gonna be in the Pacific Ocean. So now we're coming into the last pair of locks and we were warned that there's a whole bunch of wind and current around here and uh, yeah, they're not kidding. We've got about 25 knots coming in from behind us so it's kind of firing us into the locks and we're just sitting in reverse trying to slow down. This isn't the brainy hike, is it? <laughs> the other side of this is the Pacific, isn't it? Oh, I've got absolutely no idea. We could be anywhere in the world. <laughs> Okay, these are the last pair now. Everybody is so exhausted. It's four o'clock in the afternoon and we started at five o'clock this morning. So we've almost been doing this for 12 hours straight. Last little bit, we're heading in. We're gonna tie up and drop down two more. And we're gonna give a wave to the webcam as we go past because our families are like, this one's got really good resolution. We can see you are standing on the trampolines. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> okay, everybody knows what we have to do. <laughs> and luckily I got out of the way of that one just in time. Andra, hello, that would have hurt. So when they throw the monkey fist, the small line over with the weight on it, then our line handlers are just tying it onto the big heavier lines, holding it as they walk up into position. And then they pull the big blue lines up to uh, wherever they need to be tied onto at the side of the wall. So it's a repetitive process. You have to do it every time we go into the lock or every time we leave. <laughs> but Victor, the advisor, just shouted, right, everybody, you got this now. You all know what you're doing. Okay, let's just get on with it. The wind is slightly over here, so it's pushing us like this. So we're all just waving to the webcam up here to our parents and our families who are watching. And I've just spotted the visitor center underneath and the uh, viewing platform is super crowded today. So we're gonna have an audience as we go through this one. And I don't wanna ruin the surprise, but I have just got my first peek at the Pacific Ocean. I can see it, it's just right there. Enough. Okay, so this Enough. is hilarious. We, <laughs> we were just tagged in Facebook in a photo from somebody on that cruise ship. <laughs> So someone just took a photo, someone that we don't know, just took a photo from the front of that cruise ship saying, wow, I'm transiting through the Panama Canal today. This is really awesome. And you can see us right in front of them. And someone else, Richard, who follows our channel, just said, oh, wow, Red Seas are going through today. In fact, that kind of looks like a Nyoko. So that's insane. This is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. It's such a small world. I love it. I know, right? Who'd have thought? Oh, we're just like, you know, super famous now. Total celebs. Well, all of these people have arrived just to see us come through, right? <laughs> I just messaged back that wonderful stranger and said, hey, if you wave, we'll wave back and maybe you could film a little bit and we could try and put it in this episode. Oh, that would be cool. That would be amazing. I'm not <laughs> sure if we'll be able to make that happen, but it would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so this is it. The water is starting to drain away and we're on our way. We are so, so close now. This is ridiculous. I don't, the same words keep coming out. It's kind of amazing. We literally cross from one ocean to another. As soon as we get to the bottom of this gate, we have one more gate to go through and we are in the Pacific. We've crossed a continent. This is our once in a lifetime. We don't get to do this again. We certainly can't afford to do it again. It's nuts. Okay, so hard push on the uh, starboard engine.
I think we've got to like tricky level now because they've only opened up one gate, so you've got to uh, steer through the slalom course. So I think each lock is basically like upping your game each time. Yeah, it's so, like Super Mario. Well, this one, the added wind and current of like two knots. The next one, the, uh, the gate actually stays as a barrier that you've got to jump over. There's like a ramp. Really slam it? Okay, I can see that working. <laughs> Maybe we use the mass and do like a pole vault nice. situation. You've got to earn your way into the Pacific. Yeah, no one can just waltz into the Pacific. Who do you think you are? Okay, release your line, release your line. You're too quick for me, I missed the action. <laughs> yeah, real sorry. As we're coming into this final lock, everything is just kicking off. The wind is so strong behind us, it keeps spinning us around, and we're sort of getting really close to the sides. It's so hard to control three boats just from our engines. And then the lines are getting caught under other people's boats. They're having to get fenders out just in case. It is, uh, it's dramatic. Last lock. You realize the other side of that is the Pacific Ocean. That is crazy! Bring it on. We've almost made it. And that right there is the Pacific Ocean! Woo! Woo! We did it! We did it. We actually did it. We just portaged our boat. I just lifted our boat up 27 meters into the sky and put it down again. Just for the fun of it. <laughs> it's there. Like, okay, release the line. There's no going back. Release all the line. All right. Good job. That was insane. That, that was insane. I, I don't know how we're gonna fit this across in an episode. <laughs> no, my brain is so fried. It's been such a long day and so much to take in. It's been absolutely nonstop. It's been insane. I mean, it's been incredible because you had these insanely cool people. The A-team have helped us. Oh, totally. Our line has been amazing. And so you've been able to run around the camera the entire time. I've been able to just be a stress ball at the helm the entire time. <laughs> And, uh, and now we're in the Pacific Ocean. Woohoo! That's kind of crazy. Now all we need to do is get clear enough of this so we can de raft or de nest or whatever, and then Indy can stretch her legs. Woo! See you later, guys. Well done. <laughs> yeah. And that is us almost done. We've now de rafted from the two other boats. We're all on our own again, and the very last step is to go underneath the Bridge of the Americas. That's kind of like the iconic moment when everybody celebrates actually reaching the Pacific. I cannot believe that we have done this today. It has been a long time coming. I have been so nervous about it, and we're actually here. Can't even explain it. It's awesome. You should all do it. It's great. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again, Thanks Omar. Guys. Everybody, you're our heroes. Thank you so, so much. You guys rock. You're amazing. Cheers. Yeah. Woo! And there he goes. My time was brief but sweet. <laughs> uh, seriously, I don't think we could have done that without uh, what do they call them? Not pilot. Advisor. An advisor. Well, he basically piloted but remotely. Was, yeah, he was amazing. It was incredible and so nice and helpful. Yeah. Oh, that was a day. That was a day.
Celebrations! We actually did it. We have, we've made it. We've done it. We're, I'm so tired. <laughs> words, words will make sense. So, um, you may not know this fact about us, but uh, we don't drink. Uh, we don't need to. We've got funny pop. <laughs> yeah, it really is only the best. Funny, funny pop from Matt and Lou. It came from French uh, St. Martin and we got it knowing that we were aiming for the Panama Canal. Okay, so 35-ish nautical miles, six locks, 12 hours, 28 minutes. And I hate to think how many RPMs on the engine because that oh was Oh my goodness, all how many water. gallons of diesel we just used. Too many. But we have officially made it to our brand new ocean! <laughs> oh, does that taste so good? <laughs> I find it very fizzy. <laughs> Here, pour it into these. Looks interesting. Ah! It's got quite a head on it. Stop falling! Cheers. Welcome to the Pacific! Pacific. We did it! The adventure begins. Two oceans one day. It's pretty impressive. You can tell we don't drink because we're both like, down it, down, down it. One. We're not very, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need to say the word proper. You've just demonstrated it for me. Put your little finger out. Come on, do it properly. Posh up now. Oh. 